This is the Gore and Mole Podcast with your host TJ Bowser, Chad Crisman, and Big Johnny D. We have such sights to tell you. What's up, everybody, and welcome to the Gormore Podcast. This is your host with the most, TJ Bowser, and joining me today is the legendary director of your favorite Friday film, Tom McLaughlin. Hey, you guys. How you doing? We got a lot to talk about today, but before we get into the wonderful interview that we have in store for you, how was your week, Tom? How was my week? Well, um, had some very wonderful things that uh, kind of, you know, occurred just uh, with with the uh, I'm teaching again, and I've got some, you know, incredible up and coming filmmakers that I get to work with, which is always, you know, a great joy. And then um, uh, tonight, uh, actually, I'm looking forward to it. There's a <laughs> there's a cemetery here in Hollywood called Hollywood Forever, and they have screenings in the cemetery on the weekends. And tonight is Psycho. So it awesome. is so cool to sit on graveyard <laughs> lawn. You know, with about 2,000, 3,000 people all watching these, you know, classic movies. And uh, it'll be be great fun tonight with being psycho. Wow, that that is incredible. I could imagine the atmosphere for something like that would just be immense. It's Yeah, it, it's it's really fun. You know, depending on the movie, it can be just absolutely wild. And sometimes if it's uh, like they did Yellow Submarine, um, like I guess it was last year and they had fireworks go off at the end of it. And it, there was just something about it that was just, you know, absolutely surreal. That's that's really cool. So we're going to get into your interview. But first, a quick message from our sponsors. Hello there, creepy girls. Do you like spooky things in horror movies? Then Cabin 13 has the stuff for you. Check out their selection of horror-themed props, bins, busts, action figures, collectibles, and more. You can find them on Facebook and Instagram. Be sure to visit Cabin13.com and buy something, or I'll kill you! Marcio Charlie's Horror Costume Studios. Premium hand-sculpted latex masks, butts, and hoods. Everything is handmade and painted by Marcio himself. Be sure to check out his wide range and selection of products over at Facebook and Instagram at Horror Costume Studios. And we are back with writer-director Tom McLaughlin, and we have the first question. What inspired you to begin working on the script for Jason Never Dies? You know, I've been sitting on this thing for so many years, um, ever since, you know, I finished, you know, Jason Lives, and immediately there was like, you want to do another one? And I said, well, let me think about it, um, see if I can come up with something different from what I just did, and hopefully also cool. Um, I won't go into the whole thing about, you know, <laughs> Jason meets Freddie and all that that didn't happen or, you know, uh, Cheech and Chong meet Jason. None <laughs> of those things were, you know, realistic. So um, you still there? Yep. Oh, hold on one sec. Whoops. Um, but uh, I, I kept getting asked by fans for so many years, so, you know, are you going to do another one? I said, I just haven't come up with anything yet, you know, and I, you know, kept thinking and thinking. And then, you know, there was just this desire to, you know, to do another horror movie. And I've been writing a number of different scripts and uh, I, I kept finding myself being drawn back to you know, come up with something, which I finally, finally did um, about a year ago or so um, kind of lose track of time. But uh, it that idea that I came up with that I really loved spawned another idea on top of that and another. So there's a lot of different things in this, which I'm very excited about because it, it you know, it's not, you know, just kind of a normal straight ahead Friday. It's got, you know, other aspects to it that are all, of course, you know, in the structure of what a Friday the 13th is. And then, of course, the location that we've come to know and love. But um, it, I just wanted it to have something fresh about it uh, that, that has not been seen yet. What were some influences that you drew from when writing the script for Jason Never Dies? Um, <laughs> I guess humbly, I can say myself in a way. It's like I kind of went 
all right, what did I do before and what can I do different this time? Um, although the sense of humor that, that was in my Friday, Jason lives. Um, I wanted to maintain that because I just think it's more fun on these things. And to me, the key, you know, the, the key element is, is it fun to watch? Is it a ride that you really have fun with? And I, you know, I kind of thought about what I did there and kind of what the fans reactions have been over the years. And so I thought, all right, I'm going to go into this, you know, kind of with that mindset, but just allow, you know, things to go the way they, they, they're going to go. And I've seen so many horror movies since that time. So all of those influences are going to be in there. No one specific thing. Um, there's also a, a part of my childhood that's in there that, that, uh, that in a form of way I grew up. Um, and there's so, so some of it's personal, you know, as I think any filmmaker should be looking at, but a lot of it is just me thinking, okay, I'm sitting in a theater with a bunch of people and what's on the screen and is it working? And whenever I came up with something that, you know, felt right for that, I don't know, that's what went down onto the paper. Excellent. What is your dream casting for Jason Never Dies? Uh, <laughs> um, well, I think I, I pretty much made it clear that, you know, C.J. Graham was the guy who obviously I had a great relationship with on Jason lives and we've maintained our friendship after all these years. So as I was writing it, I couldn't help but see CJ, you know, playing the role just the way he moves and stuff. Um, I love Kane Hodder. Let me emphasize that. I think he's just incredible, but having not worked with him, I don't have that same kinship, you know, and that same way of kind of knowing what each other are thinking. Um, so, I mean, I think he's made an, an incredibly great, you know, Jason all these years, but you know, I'm very partial to CJ. And then the rest of the cast is all going to be basically, hopefully really good young actors who, um, and some are older, um, that are just really good actors and that you care about and you get involved with. And it's really hard to look at these things and try to have, you know, stars attached or in this thing, I'm trying not to go back and, you know, repeat, you know, the same actors for certain things just because I just wanted to kind of, you know, do something fresh and unique with it. Absolutely. So what all did you help out with on the production of Friday, the 13th vengeance? Friday the 13th Vengeance, which I think is going to come out really well uh, from the bits and pieces that I've been watching. Um, I, it came about because I was contacted uh, by Jeremy, the director, and he um, uh, you know, wanted to kind of ask very humbly, would it be all right if he did a, you know, a movie with Jason's father since I kind of started that with mine and never got a chance to do it? And I went, yeah, man, run with the ball and see what, see what you come up with. Then I was then really surprised when he, you know, chose to use uh, CJ because I envisioned Jason's father a little differently, um, just the way I had it drawn for the, the storyboards and things. Um, but getting a chance to then actually do a part in the movie, um, I have a little cameo in the, in the film, but I'm playing opposite CJ you know, was incredible. And then to actually, you know, feel him as Jason's father and then see like when there's a confrontation between Jason, Elias, I went, you know what, you know, this is perfect. These, what these guys came up with, the look and the fact that he is well matched with uh, Jason Brooks, who's playing the other Jason. Um, so it really makes sense. So, yeah. And then as far as the actual script, they sent it to me, you know, for, uh, consulting on the script, but I said, you know, you've got so many references to mine in there. I don't want to be credited as, you know, script because it'll look like to people, oh yeah, he put in all his stuff from his movie before <laughs> and it's nothing, nothing to do with anything I did. And I just said, you know, let's, you know, you guys wrote a great script, you know, run with it here um, and, and see, see where it goes. And then when the film's all done, if you want to send me this, you know, the, a print of it, copy of it i'll look at it and if there's anything i can do to help so i've got you know some you know little twists and and things in there that i you know kind of advise them on and uh they're such a great group it's gonna i know gonna come out really well they're very receptive of feedback and, and they listen to the fans and that's what separates them from other filmmakers that i see yeah yeah they just they, they, there's there's good hearts there for sure. and they you know they 
obviously have a lot of this money going towards the children's hospital when they did the fundraising. So uh, I think they got God on their side here. For sure. What was it like on the set of Friday the 13th Vengeance? Very unstressful, very laid back. Now, you know, I think they did this whole shoot in like, I don't know, 14 days or some absurd thing. And I came in towards the tail end. So there were some pretty exhausted dudes and chicks you know, <laughs> still sure. moving ahead, you know, to, to, to make things work. But there was no grumpiness. There was no, you know, God, let's get this thing over with. They, you know, they were really enjoying the making of the film. And um, that, I think, is such an important thing. And, you know, I, I just kind of really found myself kind of standing back going, this is just amazing. You know, they're doing stuff that, you know, I thought up. 30 something years ago and they're, you know, they're making it their own. And that's a really humbling, nice feeling to see, you know, see this go on, you know, a couple more generations, um, you know, the whole, you know, Jason uh, returning the way he, you know, I had him return. And that segues into our next question to what was it like seeing Elias Voorhees come to life in Friday the 13th Vengeance? Yeah, I guess I kind of answered that already in that, um, yes, as I said, I saw I saw him a little differently in my original mindset, but having it be CJ and being out there, you know, watching him and, you know, actually doing a scene with him, um, I really thought this is a this is a great thing because, you know, it, it's like the way CJ moved and stuff and, and, and now he's playing his father. So there's that particular, you know, little you know, twist um, of this is the, this is you know something that he obviously got from his father, and then just the you know facing off with uh, Jason Brooks playing the other Jason. The two of them just look great up against each other, and it's a it's a it's a good match. You know, they're, they're you know they they definitely look like this would be you know a good rumble. Last vengeance question: Can you talk about the event in Blairstown for Friday the Thirteenth Vengeance? Yeah, um, you know, on Friday the 13th, they're going to have this screening. I think it's actually two screenings of Vengeance. Ooh. And they're having CJ and myself and Jason Brooks and I think a couple of the actors, you know, coming down to be part of it. So we'll be signing things, um, you know, obviously talking with the fans, which we love to do. All of us just that's that's the best of the, of all of this is getting a chance to have people, you know, tell you how much they love the movie and also – you know, they had ideas for things and, you know, it's just it's a it's a great and fun dialogue. Um, so, yeah, we'll be screening the movie. And, um, you know, I think I think we're doing a you know, Q&A, too, with it. Um, and then I heard that Victor Miller is, is going to be coming in via, you know, some audio link um, awesome. for questions and answers, which uh, that's a thought. Pretty amazing. So, um, yeah, it's going to be a great event. What was your favorite scene to film from Jason Lives and why? Uh, you know, every one of them has its own little, um, God, I love that part of it. Or, you know, I love the whole thing, the way it came out. But I think in terms of the actual shooting, the thing I was most afraid of myself was the whole motorhome sequence. Um, oh, okay. because there was, you know, obviously that, you know, it was the stuff inside the van was all controllable. Um, and not difficult, but, you know, launching that thing off a ramp <laughs> and having no idea what's going to happen when that thing hits the ground. Um, and it was the last shot of the movie. So really, I mean, the adrenaline adrenaline couldn't have been pumping any harder um, for me, you know, and the sun was starting to come up. So, you know, there was this sort of we got to get this. We got to get this. This is it. This is it. And uh, the guy that was the stunt driver just did a remarkable job, you know, it was fearless was he hit that, you know, ramp and that thing went sailing. Um, and it was, you know, it, it was like one of those moments where, you know, the two fists in the air couldn't have been, you know, any higher up. Oh, yes, he did it. Thank <laughs> God. Uh, and then quickly got CJ in there for that last very iconic image of him standing on top of it, you know, like the warrior. So that that I think really kind of has the most amount of emotional you know, resonance for me. And Jason lives. What stopped Jason from killing all those children in the cabin when he walked through? You know what? I'm going to be, I'm going to be a little coy. He, he was looking for someone. Okay. 
Fair enough. And that's all I'm going to say about that. And um, hopefully some of that will be uh, addressed in the uh, Jason Never Dies. Awesome. So what's your relationship like with the cast and crew of Jason Lives years later? Um, like a, you know, a high, a high school club acting group of actors that never lost touch with each other. And when we get together, it's just like no time has passed. Uh, there's an energy, there's a, you know, excitement, you know, just being around each other, swapping stories, talking about the different conventions and all that. So it's just, you know, it, it's a wonderful sense of family. And when you make a movie, you know, you create this family and then everybody goes their separate ways and usually never see each other again, or maybe you see one or two of them. But the fact that we all have stayed so linked together in, in the cast, um, it's, it's just great. Awesome. Where would you like to see the Friday the 13th franchise go moving forward? I mean, like beyond your script and everything like that. You know, I think Jason is now such a iconic and I call him a monster because he's to me, he now fits in as Freddie and, and, you know, pinhead and Leatherface and Chucky and stuff. You know, they're monsters of the, you know, 80s yes. who have lived on and, you know, continue to influence and continue to have movies made about them. So I would love to see, you know, people come in and say, OK, we're going to do Jason and we're going to either set him someplace unique. You know, I, I've always had this vision of somebody doing something like um, Cape Fear, where when Robert De Niro had strapped himself under the car and they drove, you know, and he was there. So they had no idea that they were actually driving <laughs> their animal underneath. I mean, finding something, not that specifically, but something like that, where, you know, he's after somebody or something or the end. You know, he he literally goes a couple more steps to do it rather than just, you know, burst out, kill somebody and then disappear again. So, you know, coming up with creative ways, there's only so many kills. And after you see, you know, all the stuff that Kane did in the game, um, I don't know what, <laughs> what more <laughs> violent or, you know, intense thing you could possibly do. I think it just has to be you know, clever intense and suspense and things building up to it, whatever, whatever that particular kill is. Um, so, you know, it's a, it's a great place for, you know, filmmakers to come with like, all right, here are the rules. So let's maintain the rules, but let's see where we can bend them and do something that really, you know, does something different, which is what, you know, doing him in the snow, I felt was going to, you know, very much do. And there's been, you know, we've been talking about this for years. I, you know, there's going to be some fan films, I'm sure, that'll jump in there before I get a chance to get the movie made, you know, depending on when the lawsuit, you know, finally resolves. But it's a, it, that, that's the kind of idea to me where you put him in something that that's, you know, not where he's been before. And, and then you start to orchestrate what happens you know, within that, that's going to look and feel different than the other films. Awesome. So talk about your band, The Sloths. Uh, the Sloths. Um, the Sloths came about, uh, well, we were actually a band back in the mid 60s. And um, literally, we were all 14, 15, 16 years old. Yet the band was playing on the Sunset Strip and was opening for The Doors, Iron Butterfly, Pink Floyd when they came in town, the animals when they came to town, the group Love that was, you know, fixture here on Sunset Strip, the Seeds, all these bands that, you know, have become, you know, truly iconic as the years have gone on. And we were just, you know, very influenced by um, the Stones and the Yardbirds and the Kinks. Speaking of the Stones, I just saw them the other night and unbelievable show, one of the best rock and roll shows ever, not not to dismiss the fact that these guys are all, you know, in their 70s doing it. So it gives me hope that I can keep doing what I'm doing here for at least 10 more years. Um, so it was a, a, it was a period where things started to go bad, you know, in Los Angeles. Uh, 1969, what Quentin just did, you know, with his Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. You know, the Manson thing happened. A lot of the rockers were, 
you know, had died or overdosed and things. And we were trying to figure out where the music was going to go. And basically the band, you know, broke up and everybody kind of went their different ways. And then about seven years ago, we got approached because the song that was recorded back then, Making Love, actually had a, a cult following and these music publications wanted to interview the guys that were part of that band. Um, and so that kind of pulled us back together. And then we kind of went, you want to just, you know, jam, just play sold songs and then on like Wednesday night. And that became sort of like the boys poker night. You'd get together and jam some stuff from the old days. And, you know, and that one thing led to another and we decided to do a gig and it was, you know, put on YouTube and suddenly we just took off. And so we've done an album. We're in, in the process of doing a second album. We've got a number of music videos that we've done. Uh, most recent was uh, one for um, Amityville, uh, uh, the Amityville murders. Um, and it looks like we're going to have a song. So, and Deborah Voorhees, uh, you know, uh, was it 13 fanboy, fanboy 13, 13 fanboy. Um, the team fanboy. Okay, I was right the first time. Um, so there's going to be a song in there. So we, you know, we. The theme of the album is back from the grave, Ooh. and you see Sloss looking like corpses crawling out of the grave. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't, you know, the apple doesn't fall very far from the tree here with me and the horror background, and a lot of the songs really kind of deal with you know darker subjects and girls that have left you in the dark and you know alone and isolation, you know, all the teenage things that, you know, I've not grown up out of. So the band, um, you know, we continue to keep, you know, playing these gigs and uh, it's, it's wonderful. You know, one of the, one of the highlights of, of our lives that where we think we thought we were never going to get an opportunity to do what we were doing as teenagers. So that's a real blessing. That is incredible. Uh, I've listened to some of your new album and it's, it's definitely my type of music and I actually posted up on Instagram some promo stuff for this episode. A lot of people, a lot of feedback, a lot of people looking forward to actually hearing this interview. And I put one of your sloth songs in with it as well. And oh, that's, yeah. thank you. Appreciate that. So last question, 13th question, what are some projects that you have worked on or are currently working on now? Well, obviously, you know, the, uh, vengeance yes. is the, you know, the most recent thing. And then I've been working on horror movie scripts, um, a number of them kind of dealing more in the, um, how can I say it? The, the, the paranormal, which is one of my great loves, um, is, you know, that, that I don't call them ghosts. You know, I call them a, you know, particular energy that certain people are attuned to and others aren't. And, um, I also have a, a cultural monster that no one has, actually done yet the film um that i'm going to be you know keep working on that script because it's the tricky one but um that's got a lot of um uh, you know a lot of unusual imagery in it which i'm looking forward to, to getting that out there um and then um it's you know the band you know keeps keeps us going and writing the songs and things for that um and then i i'm also i don't know if a lot of the people know about my crypt um I, I I bought a crypt a number of years ago and actually put my name in and instructions of what to do once I'm gone. And um, it's there's a thing on uh, YouTube called Legends Never Die Hollywood Forever. And so I have this relationship with that cemetery and this particular mausoleum where the where the uh, crypt is. And so I, I continue to sort of put very positive energy and we have gatherings on my day there that. I mean, I call them like a crip warming um, as opposed to a house warming and, and just talk about positive, fun things. And my whole long term plan is that after I'm gone, the show goes on. So um, that's been something that I've been, you know, focused on kind of on a, a regular basis as well. That's rad. The the promo photo that I used for you uh, for this podcast actually is you standing in front of your crip with your arms out to the side. <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> you look so happy i was like okay he's really into this yeah. this is awesome yeah people i mean there's such a fear as we all know about death and and mm -hmm. these movies that we do um it's sort of a catharsis to get through that and things but when somebody actually is crazy enough to to say no i'm i'm gonna 
put down where I'm going to be and be able to visit it and have other people say, okay, we know where to find him eventually. <laughs> um, it's very, you know, twisted in a lot of people's thinking. But then on the other side, it's like, it's inevitable. We're going to go, you know, you, you know, you have no control at a certain point, you know, what's going to happen anyway. But I do have this great belief because I've experienced enough things in the paranormal world that there is something else out there. And we have just not tapped into exactly how we can come up with a formula and have it happen every time. It's like certain people see certain things, certain people feel certain things, certain people hear certain things. There's there's so many different twists and turns in this world. But I mean, who would have thought an iPhone and, and you know, computers and, and modems and all this stuff was anything that was possible to send images and to communicate and stuff 20 years ago. You know, it's, it's uh, things have advanced so much just technically. But, you know, the greatest living brain computer we have, we all carry around with us. Absolutely. What what great insight you have there. That is that is great. But thank you so much for coming oh, my on. My pleasure. The, oh, this, this this has been awesome. This has been a dream come true. Thank you for the opportunity to interview you, man. OK, thank you. You know, it's been great. Really enjoyed it. Took your picture off the wall. Lost your number so I could call. Tried so hard to forget you. But my heart just refuses to. And I'm haunted by your memory. Back to me, haunted. Please set me free. See your face in the magazines. Every night you're in my dreams. Friends tell me the town heals all, but I'm still waiting for your call. And I'm haunted by your memory, haunted. Please come back to me, haunted. Just like yours Made me cry The tears I stole Just when I thought that I was free The ghost of you Comes back to me And I'm haunted By your memory Haunted Please come back to me Haunted